Hello, Shane. Thanks for coming to Clash Down today. I was just here to ask you a few questions. Sure. There is a lack of youth in mental health services and things. What do you want to do about it if you were elected? Okay, I'm very conscious of youth mental health problems. In fact, right across the board, I think there's a lot of mental health problems in Ireland. I think one of the things that is very important is to have early intervention. Um, I think it's really important when families are struggling that there's supports for families. Um, and very often, if parents are having difficulties, then their children have difficulties as well. So from the very start, I think from the time a baby is born, there should be support services for families. And I think those kind of supports and uh, assistances should be available right through the life cycle, you know, from young children up to teenage years and into adulthood. We're not very good at providing services in the community for people who are struggling with mental health problems. And we have a high rate of mental health problems and we've also a high addiction rate in terms of abuse of substances. So there's a big challenge for the health service to take on. I don't think we're anywhere close to providing adequate services. What I would like to see is much more community counselling services for young people. And while there's a start being made in recent years to providing those kind of community services, there's nothing like enough. And I'd like to see that service expanded. I'd also like to see a service provided through the schools so that one of the problems, I suppose, is that, that um, the, the counselling services in schools, the guidance counselling services, were very severely cut back. And my party wants to restore those. And in most cases in schools, I think the guidance counsellor could deal with some of the issues that arise. But they would be the person then to refer students on to, to a, an outside counselling service run by the HSE. And that's the kind of model I'd support. Um, where are you and your party going to improve in the youth service? In youth services? Well, I suppose we're very keen to invest money into local services in communities, and whether that's health services or education services or um, youth services, facilities and staff. Um, we've taken a very different view to most other parties. A lot, most of the other parties are saying that they're going to cut taxes, they're promising to cut taxes. And we're saying if you do that, there'll be less money to spend on services. So we're saying leave the taxes as they are and keep that money for investing in improving services. Because a lot of the services that people depend on in local communities were cut back fairly drastically during the recession. And we need to repair those and start investing in them again. And as regards the taxes, I know nobody likes paying taxes. But we need to create you know, the kind of country where people are prepared to pay their taxes because they know the taxes are going to fund good services for people in the communities. And you know, I know people are under pressure uh, financially, but we're saying we'd be much better off if we concentrated on trying to cut the cost of living instead of cutting services and cutting taxes. So that's what we're saying, cut the cost of living, keep the tax money there so we have it to invest in services. Um, in services, look the way you say invest in services, and um, why can't we have a SASI project? Well, I suppose there have been a lot of cutbacks at local level, that's the problem. And, you know, we need to protect that money so that we can provide the important services locally. And um, it's, you know, similar to the point I made just there a minute ago. If we give tax cuts, then there won't be enough money for services. It's as simple as that. And I think most people understand that. And over the last few weeks, I've been going around knocking on a lot of doors, canvassing for the election. And people aren't giving out about um, taxes. They're giving out about the fact that the services are so bad. So, you know, it's very clear people want money invested in services. And we need to do that. I mean, you just stop this talk about cutting taxes. And um, you talk about um, the cut the price of living and stuff. Yeah. Um, do you not think kids nowadays are under pressure if their families are under pressure and stuff like that, which will cause them into hanging around with gangs and doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing? I do. I think families generally are under a lot of pressure. Um, and I think when there's pressure at home, certainly about money, that causes a lot of difficulties. Obviously, the parents are concerned about that because they're not able to provide for their children in the way they'd like to. But I think when there's stress at home, Children pick that up as well, sons and daughters and families pick up that stress. 
And overall, it's not a very healthy situation for people to be operating in. And that's why we'd say what this, the outgoing government has done over recent years in bringing in all the new charges is very unfair. It's put a lot of pressure on families and a lot of people are struggling. And, you know, it's, you can see when you look at the, the research that has been done on this, there's been five budgets introduced by this government and every one of them has been what's called regressive. That means that they've been more difficult for people on low incomes than on high incomes. So it's, it's widened the gap between rich and poor people. And that's not fair in our view. And we want to change that. And we want to ensure that everybody and every family can live life with dignity and people can afford to have a decent quality of life. Um, so that the money in their pocket, they can pay their bills and the money in their pocket and some money to spare at the end of the week. And that also that they can depend on public services, things like good quality schools, that money, enough money invested in them, a good health service, that we have enough housing for people. All of those important things that people need to live a life with dignity. And we want to ensure that that's possible for people. In regards to the young people and having services for them, would you be bringing more services for older people, as in like courses and stuff? Well, I'm a great supporter of education. I used to be a teacher before I was in politics. And I think that if we can invest properly in education, that that is the best route to a fulfilling life for people. And I think both at school level, that we need to have really good quality schools that are properly resourced, where it, sending a child to school isn't a burden and a worry for parents. I think the cost of sending your children to education is far too high. At this stage in this country, after, you know, we're in existence for 100 years in this country, and we should have free education at primary and secondary level. But we also know that a lot of people didn't have the benefit of education when they were younger. So a lot of parents and grandparents, you know, may have left school at 12 or 13. And the idea that school was something you just did when your education was something you did when you were young, I think is an outdated idea. We have this idea now of lifelong learning, and I think that's fantastic. It's great to see adults returning to education, you know, no matter what age they are. And the worst thing is for people continue on uh, in difficulty and maybe with serious literacy difficulties and that really holds them back in life. So education is the key to a better life and that should be provided for people. You know, ideally that we do it during the school years, but for people who've missed out on that, there is a need for second chance education and we should be investing in that. Thanks very much. Okay. Why don't we have a headshot project? Um, Headstrong, I think, is an organisation which is a fantastic organisation. Um, it's it's um, a voluntary organisation. It's not, you know, it's not provided by the HSE or by the government. So it does great work. Um, there's no doubt about that. And it's been very active in, re in relation to youth mental health. I suppose they're very stretched. They can only provide services in certain areas because they don't get enough funding. And... Um, that's something we'd certainly like to see here in Finglas. Um, but it is about government providing enough funding for them. And again, you know, it's a matter of priorities for government. Government takes in everybody's taxes every year and then they decide, decide how they're going to spend that. So it's a matter of what the government thinks is important. And I think the last government have had their priorities wrong um, and they haven't invested in services. And as I said earlier, I think they've cut a lot of the services and they've put a lot of pressure on families too because things have got so dear with all the new charges, you know, water taxes and property taxes and prescription charges and all of those extra charges. So, you know, I would like to see the next government identifying the things that are important in life, ensuring that young people are supported fully, uh, both from a health and well-being and welfare point of view and that we have really good services for people so that people have the best possible start in life. And that's what government should be about, in my view. It's about ensuring that everybody can live a life of dignity and that everybody can reach their potential. And if we start out with that idea, I think, that we support young people to ensure that young people can be the best that they possibly can be 
and that they're given opportunities and can reach their full potential. Because everybody has fantastic potential. The problem is that a lot of the time people don't have the opportunity to realise that potential because they're held back by maybe difficulties in their families or difficulties in the area that they live or underfunded schools. And we want to end that. We want to ensure that everybody has a fair chance in life. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks Thank very much. Thank you. Thanks, Shane. Okay, thanks, Michael.